The yeast Pichia pastoris has been used for about 30 years to produce thousands of recombinant proteins, such as insulin to treat diabetes and antibodies to prevent migraines. Despite its success, there are some stubborn problems encountered by research scientists when they try to use Pichia pastoris to produce the recombinant protein. In order to provide those working in this field with strategies to overcome these common obstacles, we interviewed eight experts in Pichia protein expression to create a written review and video. We expect that our work will be a tool to help empower scientists to successfully express challenging proteins in this popular yeast. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us in our brief presentation on the yeast Pichia pastoris. To start us off, I would like to introduce a pioneer in the field, Dr. Jim Craig. Here he is describing his early use of Pichia pastoris as an expression system. You've got to have a strong promoter and you've got to have a method for inserting your DNA from your vector DNA into the host and getting it to stay there. So you need a promoter and you need a transformation system. And actually my job was mostly in developing the transformation system for the, for the, uh, for Pechia. Next, we have a clip of Dr. Barrero and Dr. Glick, where they discuss improving protein secretion by using the OST1 pre-signal sequence, which directs co-translational translocation across the ER membrane. For proteins that fold pretty stably in the cytosol, maybe being long isn't good enough for post-translational translocation, and maybe you really need to be driven across the ER membrane with a uh, with a co-translational signal sequence. Was that uh, E2 pinson, which is a protein, uh, a first protein, uh, was improving a lot when it was using the, when we were using the previous one. Uh, so the co-translational translocation here was making a huge effect. Next, we have a clip of Dr. Carl Batt discussing his research on increasing chaperone and foltase levels with the goal of enhancing single-chain antibody secretion in Pichia. You know, like I said, um, at least at the time, these folks at NIH, that was their normal operating procedure, was to just put in a strain that overexpressed BIP and PDI. And, and the question you have to ask yourself is, would it hurt? All right. Would it hurt? Um, does the metabolic load of producing these proteins mess picky up not apparently so you know it's it, it becomes at least you know in in other people's hands just some something of a routine next we have a clip of dr roland weiss discussing the power of his high throughput 96 deep well plate screening assay to efficiently find the best pickiest strains for expressing your protein of interest to find strain that can be or a couple of suitable strains that are consistently and reproducibly better than others um, to be to be given to bioreactor or maybe shake flask even um, if, if you're still doing that uh, it's it's a wonderful system so it, it works out every time actually we use it next we have a clip of dr. Ah explaining clonal variation and the importance of discovering a specific biomarker that characterizes high-level PICIA secretors. But I can tell you that for certain, we do see clonal variation regardless what protein we're looking at. And it's why having a tool to find a way to quickly screen for a protein might be so useful. Because we, in my lab at the moment, we spend a lot of time working on vaccines and virus-like particles. We have real problems with trying to find good secretors. One unique property of Pichia pastoris is its ability to undergo N-glycosylation. Here is Dr. Tom Chappelle describing the intricacies of mammalian N-glycosylation within Pichia pastoris. And, you know, when you're expressing mammalian proteins in a yeast system, and you basically can't get a perfect um, N-link um, mimic in, in yeast as you can in a, in a mammalian system, Next, we have a clip of Dr. Carrie Love discussing her inspiration for developing the Insight System, 
a compact and adaptable multi-product manufacturing system for large-scale on-demand production of clinical quality protein biologics. We really um, want to serve the global poor and, um, and, and in that um, we want to figure out how to, to create new manufacturing solutions that increase the accessibility um, and reduce the cost of biologic drugs. Next, we have Dr. Knut Madden outlining the help that can be provided by companies working with PICIA to scientists faced with difficulties secreting their protein of interest. Um, so, so as the, the industry gets, gets older, making proteins with PICIA is, gets better. The kinds of problems that come to biogrammatics, people that want a protein made, are more of the harder nuts. And so what do we do if, if we, you know, we try something else? <laughs> and and um, it's, it's really the, the most frustrating part of my job is when PICIA is not good at making something and we can't figure out how to do it. 